In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this morning's Gospel, we see this amazing typology, an image from the Old Testament carrying on into the New Testament. Jesus says that just as Moses lifted up the pole with the bronze serpent on it, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The time that Jesus was referencing, of course, is the Exodus, when Moses had been leading the Israelite people out of Egypt, escaping a life of slavery there. Wandering in the desert, God showed them mercy by providing food from heaven. But they complained. They complained that it was not enough. It was just miserable bread. But after a plague of poisonous snakes had subsequently befallen them, they understood that they had transgressed God by this complaining. Literally, food was raining down from them from heaven. God had provided, been providing for their every single need that they had, and yet they still complain. But seeing their sin, they asked Moses to pray to God for them to take away this plague. And that at the direction of God, Moses made this pole so that anyone who had been bitten by a poisonous snake could look at it and live. And by the way, this is still the symbol of most hospitals, medical institutions, and ambulance services. The golden, or the, the bronze, I should say, the bronze serpent on the pole that Moses made. Now, in our gospel reading, God's Son, at the direction of the Father, has come into the world to be lifted up. And now anyone who looks to Christ and who believes in him, who places their trust in him, who loves him, will have an eternal life. And as he would say later on in the sixth uh, chapter of John's Gospel, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. In our Gospel reading today, we also hear what is perhaps the most famous verse in the whole Bible. John 3.16. Most people, even if they are not churchgoers, will probably have heard it. And I'm sure most of us in this room this morning probably know it from memory. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. What I think is very important is that God did not just send another prophet. He did not just send another messenger, a representative, or in our modern terminology, God did not send a corporate PR manager. He did not send a communications expert. He sent his only son, the second person of the divine trinity, to enter into our world, into that chaos that is humanity, on a mission to personally gather up the whole world, to invite as many people as will come into a new relationship with him. Jesus' mission is to establish a new covenant in which all people, Jew or Gentile, slave or free, all people, without exceptions, can join, where we would be all caught up in the love of God together. That perfect love, which is shared between the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, is shared with us too. It is as if we have been personally adopted into God's divine family. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Notice here that God is the one doing the work. God is the one seeking us out first. Unfortunately, sometimes people think that God is far away from us and that we need to find him. You've probably heard the question at least uh, once in your life, have you found Jesus? Well, I can assure you, Jesus is not lost. We are the ones who are lost, right? And our Lord is searching us out. And thankfully, thankfully, he is always nearby. Again, our blessed Lord reiterates his purpose in coming to the world. He said, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. 
Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. So those who believe in Jesus are not condemned. But what does it mean to believe? Believing does not simply mean intellectually agreeing to a set of principles or even just agreeing that Jesus is the Son of God. Even the demons agree and believe that. Instead, faith in God entails much more than just admitting the truth about God. Faith and belief in God necessarily leads to action. We must live out our faith in our everyday lives. We cannot read this gospel passage today and think to ourselves, well, well, I have faith, so I'm all right. I don't need to do anything else. As if it is through our faith alone that we are saved. Perhaps we should look to what St. Paul says in the reading from Ephesians for more context. He says that formerly we were dead through the trespasses and sins which we were once living in. We were following the course of this world. As the Lord said, people love the darkness rather than the light. But now the light of the world has come. Those who formerly were in darkness are now being drawn into the light. It was only out of God's deep love for us, out of his desire that none should perish, that he sent his only son to make us alive. Formerly we were dead in our trespasses, and now we are alive in Christ. And this next part, I think, is so important. St. Paul says, it is by grace you have been saved. By grace, God has raised us up with Jesus and given us a place with him. By grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast. The point is this. Even the faith that we have, the fact that we believe in Jesus in the first place, that's a great and good thing. But it's nothing that we have done for ourselves. Grace comes first before faith. Grazia prima. This grace and faith are gifts from God, not merited or deserved on our part, but simply a gift. And the believing in God, as I said earlier, necessarily involves action. St. Paul says, we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Good works should be our way of life. We were created to share in the life and love of God. We were created to serve him and our neighbor. We were created to walk in the light. And I think a question that we should all be asking ourselves and I most certainly include myself in asking this question, is this. How would other people that I come in contact with know that I have faith? How would they know I'm a Christian? Through my words and my actions, could they tell that God has given me his grace? Am I a good reflection of Christ's light to others? I think these questions are good for us to continually keep in our mind to see if there's anything that we need to focus on improving in our lives. But the reality is that it's easier said than done. All the time, nature is being perfected by God's grace, but the reality is we are still imperfect. The light has come into the world, but we are sometimes still tempted by the evil one to remain in darkness. And yet, yet we are continually being invited to come back to the light, we just have to reach out to him, to set our gaze upon him and to be lifted up as the Christ, in, uh, Christ was crucified and risen up. And we will receive the healing that we so desire if we do that, if we keep our gaze on Christ. Rich in his mercy, he came to save us. Out of his love for us, he has raised us up and invites us to dwell in his love. Through the gift of grace, he enables us to have faith, to love, and to trust him. He has prepared us to serve others, living out that faith as a new way of life. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we carry on through this Lenten season, 
Let us walk in the light of Christ. Let us give thanks for the love which God has for each one of us, the love which he gave his only begotten son so that we might have eternal life. And finally, let us always look to him who was raised up for us and who raises us up with him and enables us to do what he has prepared for us beforehand to be our way of life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.